show. Tonight, Dick's special guest, Colonel Raymond Kassai. Ladies and gentlemen, Dick Cavett. My guest tonight has been called a number of things. He's become a kind of walking epithet. Um, he's been called a traitor, opportunist, even murderer. After his country's recent revolution, he fled into exile, barely escaping the firing squad. Anyway, would you welcome, please, Colonel Raymond Kassai. <laughs> Have a seat there and uh, Camera three as comfortable tighten. as possible. Stand by First two. of all, thank you for agreeing to appear on the show. It wasn't uh, a revolution. I beg your pardon? In your opening remarks, you said we attempted a revolution. What we attempted was a quick, clean, non-violent overthrow of the government. That's called a coup d'etat. Thank you, Colonel. I, I stand corrected. According to some reports, the uh, coup d'etat actually began with the activities of a group of terrorists. Is that right? Yes, in a sense, that's true. You might say it began about the time they kidnapped the uh, Minister of Economics in the old government. Like a lot of other cabinet ministers, he was almost completely corrupt. He was a natural target for the terrorists who were creating havoc all over the country. The next day, I was at a picnic given by Professor and Mrs. Russo for Colonel Anthony Narrowman, a brilliant strategist who was retiring in two weeks' time. That's a Czechoslovakian. I think you like it. Very sensitive. That's right. When Russia tanks run over them, they tend to fall apart. That's a recurrence. Colonel, will you be terribly upset if I can't stay? Not at all. Okay. Now, now, you stay and show proper respect. Oh, Daddy, come on. Come on, proper respect. I'm leaving the army, remember? No, really, it's a great pity. Your age, with your record, your whole career ahead of you, you've got it all to come. Yes, precisely. How's your farm? Have you seen it? Yes, we went down last weekend. I mean, nothing's been done to it since my wife died, but uh, 
Soil's still good. Machinery's salvageable. It's turning it back on us. Yeah. You want to go, don't you, John? Mm-hmm. Take care. Okay. Thank you for the hat. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, children need mm. two sets of legs. One minute they arrive, the next minute they want to take off. One set of legs in each direction. You're not going to run off with the boys and leave your father all alone, are you? I don't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> There's your answer. <laughs> I don't think I should... <laughs> Now, come on, get into it. <laughs> the army has to guard the army against his own population. Craziness. <laughs> hey, you should have got that one. Go and get it. He's getting old. Oh, uh, just my <coughs> kicking leg. <laughs> there's a dead man down there! There's a dead man! Down there, down there! Go back, you kids. Go on. You three, go straight back. My God, he's the cabinet minister. Doesn't anybody kill clean anymore? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the Republic. Yesterday, this country lost one of its greatest men. And I lost a good friend. Talk, let's close them up. My message to you today is one of national mourning close and up, solidarity. Please. Closer. I warn those who are responsible Shit, for these next? crimes against our nation that murder will be met with immediate and total reprisal. Like myself, the members of the armed forces are outraged by this attack against my government. They are here today to show their support for us and for what we represent. Their presence alone will demonstrate to those who will challenge us that force will be met by force. <laughs> having us stand around there like a bunch of toy soldiers. He's a politician. What do you expect? What do I expect? Some respect. Not all that bullshit about the army is here today to show their support of his government. People think we're a bunch of eunuchs. You know, something they're right. Well, I'm sick of being caught in between. Yeah, I know how you feel. Well, as you know, I'm getting out. I would take you with me, but uh, I think with your loud mouth, you'd scare all the fish away. <laughs> See you. Catch one for me. I'll try. Cheer up.
Excuse me. I'm looking for the wine company. We're closed. This is it, but we're closed. Oh, I think there must be some mistake. Nope. We're closed. Come here. Come on. Come on. Sorry, John. I hope your wife won't mind. I just didn't want my daughter to be up too late. It's all right. Come in. After you. Listen. You've got to stay in the army. Sean, I do not believe that you've dragged me over here. No, listen, listen. You know those terrorists, the ones who were caught this morning? They were getting outside help. Guns, ammunition. But at the moment. Even finance. You know why I'm leaving the army is precisely to avoid this kind of conversation. I mean, I'm going to take my political lessons from Trout, if you don't mind. Oh, no, really, this is no joking matter. I understand that. And those terrorists, the ones who killed the cabinet minister, they're just the fringe. And the rest of us are going to get caught. Between them and that rotten, incompetent, corrupt government. You're the professor. Find the answers. I mean, I... Oh, I've got one. You? Oh, really? I know this army. I've taught this army. And you have a responsibility. You are needed. Don't flatter me. I know, I know you. Now, what are you getting at? A coup d'etat. Anthony, most men go through their whole lives without any chance for real heroism. I believe this is our chance. You know, when people mention heroism to me, I order up extra coffins. Heroism is what keeps our graveyards full. I tried to wait up for you, Daddy. You should be asleep. You've got to do the medals, Daddy. Oh, I do. Well... <clears throat> now, this one was given to me by the Sultan of Aleppo for finding water in the desert. Daddy. Hmm? That's the... Uh, this is the Order of Merit, 1973. Why do you always make me go through all this? Huh? You know what they give you these for? So you know how important you are. You should go to 
asleep. Come on, snuggle up. Well, we need some help. Colonel, you must talk to them. She didn't do anything. You know I her. She's a loving I don't, girl. I don't understand. Uh, she, Who did she do did. anything? Donna. They, they've taken her to prison. They say she's one of the terrorists, one of those people who killed the minister. She's not that kind of person. I think you both better come in. He says you can see the girl. You have ten minutes. Donna? Donna, it isn't true, is it? since you were a child. You're not capable of doing this. You're not a killer. What difference does it make? I am one of them. Well, let me first get you out of here. And then we'll... Oh, come on! You're afraid, aren't you? You're afraid you've been stupid because you haven't seen what's been happening in the streets. So you tell me when you're the army and they're the police. You tell me what the difference is. I promised your parents I'd get you out. Tell me back. But you won't. You won't and you can't. Because you are a part of why I'm in here. Now you've seen the girl. You know these people are trying to destroy our country. I don't want her left down there. Of course, of course not. I'll get her out of there. I promise. Thank you.
There are conditions, Jean. Understood. Expected. Complete and general amnesty should we succeed. Agreed. Free elections after six months. Two years? I said conditions, not negotiating points. All right. We do not assassinate the president or any of the cabinet. How about the security police? Blair? Uh -huh. Well, let me just say that I don't want the cure to be worse than the disease. I want absolutely no unnecessary violence. Mm -hmm. We have to have complete agreement on that. Oh, yes, of course, of course. There is one other condition. Huh? Kasai. Oh, no. Kasai's friends are all big businessmen. He spends most of his time on their that yachts. That is precisely why I want him. We have to have someone who is in touch with the conservative element in the country. He's a good man. He's a fine soldier. I've talked to him. I think he's willing. It's up to you. All of us or none of us. No, not at night. The war room is right through here. But why this place? Why the war room? A natural place for army officers to meet. Well. Tactical units for the capital. But what about Aramco? He's a friend, and he was recently passed over for promotion. All right. Let's see what else you can find out about him. What's the holdup? You ever seen anything like it? A whole battalion waiting for a cabinet minister's dog to take a piss. Key buildings and people in the capital. You can forget about the Navy and for purposes of the Air Force, ordnance, engineering, medics, etc. We can forget about and anyone who's up close to the borders. Your unit, Major, is 35 kilometers from the city. Could be in the capital, what? 45 minutes? It's not enough. We need another battalion. Potential troublemakers, do you think? Just a few men I wouldn't trust, maybe ten in all. Well, they would have to be sent on leave when the time came. It's a great shame about the South, isn't it? What is? Poverty. Not enough roads, one hospital. Still, I suppose some people are better suited to that kind of primitive environment. You know, they get on better with it, don't they? What I'd like to get on with, but it's not too much trouble, is the game. That's okay with you. What's the problem? The problem is that one day I'm going to do something about the problem. You know why I'm here, don't you? I think so. Who are you? I'm the janitor. Who are you? I work here. Since when do janitors work at this time of night? 
Every once in a while, I decide that a floor cleaned at 11 o'clock at night is just as good as a floor cleaned at 6 o'clock. Only better, because there are no people around. At least there was no one around till you people came along and started all your planning. What planning? What planning? <laughs> if you don't know, I don't know. I've never known. For 16 years I've been around these places. Plan this. Plan that. But you know something? Everything just gets worse. We still have to decide on a tank brigade. Without the tanks, we won't have ultimate power in the streets of the city. Mm. And one of the brigades is up near the border, so we can forget about it either for us or against us. So that leaves either the 21st with Colonel Zeller. Um, he has a reputation for being arrogant and hard to handle. Well, he's the best there is. There's something about him that worries me. Listen, I think Zeller's a fine soldier. Yeah, I agree. No. I'm not so sure. He may be hard to handle, but he's good if he can be controlled. I think Stauffenberg over at the 22nd is infinitely more advisable. I've known him for years. He's a good man. You know him, did you? Oh, yeah. He's a good friend of mine. <laughs> We've had some incredible times together. conclusions on this. Just think about it for a while. Think about it. Think about what? Joining a lot of traitors? A fast trip to the firing squad? This is treason, what you've been planning. Have you thought about that? What the hell else would it be? Look! We've known each other too long to start playing military honor games. Can you think of another way to get rid of the bastards around this country? Or are you more worried about your next promotion. Who else is in on this besides you and Nariman? Hey, wait a minute. Give me division headquarters. Blair, security. Tango Alpha. This is Whiskey Delta. Do you read me? We've been having transmission problems. Tango Alpha, do you read me? There's Nariman and Kasai. They're probably not alone. They're trying to get others to join. Can you hear me? I can't hear you. It's some kind of plan. Can you read me? They're trying to get others to join. Can you hear me? And so the two men get crushed to death by a tank and nobody knows how it happened. Nobody sees it happen. Nobody even knows when it happened. It just rolls merrily along on, on this piece of ground and makes hamburger out of them. How much does one of those tanks weigh? 57 tons, sir. Could anybody tell me by what principle of elementary physics 57 tons gets up and moves off on its own? Could you describe the man you saw coming out of the Colonel's tent? No, sir. It was dark.
I want to hear what he says. You understand? Can you hear me? I can't hear you. You know what this is? It's an invitation for me to deliver the eulogy at Stauffenberg's funeral. It's from the family, from the widow. Well, this is the beginning of it. Begin? Of what? The killings. No. Why? Now, surely to God we at least have our principles. I mean, we're we, we, not just a collection of bandits or animals. Well, what would you have done if it had been me in that tent? Would you have killed me? Of course not. You answer too quickly. Now, you did what you had to do. Our responsibility is just as great as yours, if not greater. What can you say? What can you possibly say at the funeral of a man you just murdered? What can I say? Oh, oh, I can talk about how we were boys together, how we grew up together, what a decent lad he was. I can say how at school he was a, a worse scholar than me, but a better boxer. Or do I stand there with one hand on the cross and lie, like every other bloody little dictator that's run this country, and say, oh, how dearly we miss our departed, how much we loved him, how we respected him, how, how he will be remembered for, for his decency, how, how we felt about him as a soldier and, and as a human being. His death was a tragedy, the way that it happened. And his memory will linger with all of us as long as we live. Come on, move it, soldier! What, do you got an invalid over there? Get the lad out. Come on, move it! Listen, go take him a wheelchair. Concentrate. Get those ropes back. A little hustle. All right, come on, come on, come on, come on! Hey, boy! Okay, come on! Colonel? How are you? Fine. All right, come on, smartly! We haven't uh, seen you at the War College for some time. War College? Has been a while. Hey, you! Hey, you, come at me. Is it different from what I used to do to the infantry and the airborne, I say? I'm sure it is. <laughs> We're all driving out to improve us, anyhow. You 
still uh, fancy the game of cards? Interesting that you should contact me. I was wondering why. And it dawned on me. It seems that what you're saying is that you're planning a coup d'etat. Am I wrong? Pick a card. Queen of Hearts. Hmm. Well, for a coup to be successful, you need tanks. My tanks. Am I right? The sudden burst of friendship must be an aid of something. Oh, don't misunderstand me. I appreciate it. Pick a card. When you come right down to it, tanks are fairly important. And our force can fly over and indeed around government buildings, but it can't hold them. You may remember what happened in Morocco in 72. The colonel who staged the coup had the entire air force and they failed. Yes, they were also lousy shots. They failed to shoot down the king's private jet. You study these things, do you? Mm. Jack of diamonds. Getting the trick of it. It's not just tanks, though. You may remember what happened in Chile the first time they tried it. No, what happened then? Oh, the... Tanks rolled up to the presidential palace, shelled the hell out of it. A couple of hours later, they were all in jail. Surely. Bunch of comics. No thinking, no planning, no support units, no technicians to man radio stations, catering sappers. You have those sort of details. I'm sure that a sensible little arrangement could be made. Pick a card. I always thought it would be interesting to be Minister of Defence. Some changes could certainly be made around here. Ace of Hearts. Shit. Don't be, uh, go back to my place. Your place isn't as nice as this place. But listen, uh, there are some things I want to talk to you about. Why can't we talk here? Hmm. Now, what's all this I hear about, um... Barrientos and, and, uh... I think his name is Russo. That's very interesting. What would they be doing together? Do we have anything on them? Okay. Gentlemen, Colonel Zella. <laughs> Colonel Major Dominique. Where were we? Colonel Kasai. No, General Staff Headquarters. This is Major Anwar. Anwar, you're in on this. Yes. I'm joining the other side. You may too after this. That's Colonel Berrientos at the Airborne. Dr. Rousseau. Yes, how are you? Doctor. I think that's everybody, isn't it? I'm sorry, Colonel Min. Min. I often wondered where your true loyalties lay. I must say the same thought crossed my mind about you. Then it's a good thing we didn't check on each other, isn't it? <laughs> Shall we sit down, gentlemen? Tell me, men, do you think those hopelessly unfit infantrymen of yours will keep pace with my tanks when we go rolling on there? And botch the whole thing up? What? Into the jaws of death, into the mouth of hell. 
Just like the charge of the Light Brigade. Perfect scenario for disaster. You follow an admirable military tradition. General Custer would have nothing to learn from you. Maybe you prefer us to march up to the presidential palace and heave books at it. <laughs> Followed by a charge of the heavy brigade of intellectuals, academics and historians. We should keep war and peace in reserve to throw at the steel doors. <laughs> <laughs> you might just be better off. These are the Rousseaus. He's 20 years older than she is. It might not be apparent from these passport photos, but uh, they're the only ones we have on file. Concentrate on her. Forget about him. Why her? Because she's 20 years younger than he is. Look for the weakest link, gentlemen. Always. I'm going to let the ambassador do the honors here. Sir? Ah, that's very kind of you. Thank you, Colonel. I want you all to know that we've got the whole cake budget for one year wrapped up in this monster. Any more, and I have to go direct to the Pentagon. <laughs> There go the diplomats. Which do you want, the uh, priests or the professors? I need salvation more than you do. <laughs> I was saying to my men just the other day, what this army needs is more spiritual counsel. <laughs> Please. No, thank Please, you. Uh, bring me a ginger ale. Sir. Now, that was a couple of years ago, before I was a battalion. And what are you involved in now? <clears throat> battalion commanders are uh, always very busy. They're involved in many things. How is Colonel Kirov? He's fine. Good, good. You all right? I'm all right. All I know is that your president is taking great pains to assure everyone that things are okay. This is true, Ambassador. Are things okay? I can only presume that they are. Relax. The government always has some secret police at these things. Yes. But Blair never comes to these things. He always sends one of his flunkies. He just wants to make sure his men are earning their pay.
Really, the streets aren't safe anymore. Quite. It's a pity about your friend, the way he drinks when he's under pressure. What pressure? Well, good night to you all. Maybe we should kill him. Are you serious? No. But it's interesting that we all at least were prepared to consider it. I want the power to arrest Colonel Barrientos. My department doesn't have that power. Others must approve. And you know what would happen if you were wrong? Like last time, the army is not as meek as the bureaucrats. I'm not wrong. Last time was different. I only need him for a couple of hours, that's all. That's all it takes. There are signs everywhere. Officers sharing taxes who aren't usually seen together. Colonel Barrientos has been on a wagon for three years, now he's suddenly back on the booze. I'm not sure that's enough. It's enough for me. D do you know how, how the plot to assassinate Hitler in, in 1944 was nearly discovered? One of the German generals who was planning to kill him started perspiring heavily in his sleep. The maid who was in charge of the beds became suspicious when she saw the stains on the sheets. Dirty laundry is your profession, not mine. From now on, our problem is the airborne. Yes, but it's not only the airborne, it's pretty into us himself. It's absolutely necessary. Rousseau's supposed to have checked him out. Rousseau is better off than his last room. Oh, come on. At least he knew enough not to try to recruit Kira. Will you be late again tonight? Mm-hmm. Business. You know how these things are. Your coffee. Thank you. Will you be needing the car today? No, not until tonight. You, uh, going downtown again? Shopping? Yes, I'm meeting Mary. Like it? I do. Will you wear it? 
I will. When? When? Let me go. When we go dancing. <laughs> oh, to a party at the embassy? That is, if you even talk to me at the party. For a secret lover, you're becoming increasingly bold. That is because I love you. And besides, we've been hiding too long. You don't care who comes, huh? No. Are you expecting someone? Mm. The entire brigade, led by your husband. Let's face the world together. Come in. <coughs> Have we settled that then, Jean? <coughs> okay, it's 14. Now, if we could, uh, if we could move on. Mm -hmm. We could move all the planes from the capital in less than two minutes. <laughs> I know that every one of my men has a chance to blow a hole in the president's palace. If we're going to overthrow this government, I want what more the than phony stuff. Coming from over here. How do you rate the airplane? Listen, yeah. I can have a whole battalion parachute into the palace courtyard if you want. Or are you fixed for five-ton trucks? If you need them, I can arrange for some of ours to be sent over to you on the day we make our move. Be careful. That might alert people in the government. Be seated, gentlemen. No, 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 no. Go ahead. Very good. Now, move. Move! Sloppy gentlemen. Unprofessional, even. There's evidence to put you all in front of a firing squad. You know that, don't you? You, Min, have you bothered to see who's been following you for the past two days? Or were you even aware of it? Seems doubtful, doesn't it? And you two, being seen together, is very foolish, gentlemen. It's very foolish. This is Captain Hillsman. He's a security officer attached to the 132nd Infantry. I thought he might be of some use to us. Particularly since we have less than 10 days left. We no longer control this venture. It controls us. It has a life of its own. It has its own rules, its own needs. And the penalties will be very grim indeed those needs are not met. So I apologize for the theatricals. It became very obvious that they were necessary. There are children, parents, wives. We have a problem. Blair's getting close. How? Rousseau's wife. Damn. Damn. That is a big problem. I want you to watch Rousseau carefully. This could get very messy if Blair gets to him. I love you, and I want something more for us than how our lives are now. 
Every time I leave you, I die a little bit. And then having to go back and face him, I just feel so awful. <coughs> That's good. That's very good. Very, very good. Well, when are you showing them to her? <coughs> oh, not to her. To him. My dear doctor, I didn't think anyone would be here this late. Just doing a little homework. Do you spend many nights here, Colonel? No, I prefer doing other things than homework. Just wanted to make sure I had the overall picture in my mind. Yeah. Of course, it'd be easier if the timing were better. It would, moving this baby out in the middle of the night to present certain problems. I didn't mean that kind of timing. I meant if we could hold off until one of the big foreign companies announced their profits for last year. Well, sir, I'm beginning to think you're very good at your work. Perhaps. There's nothing more to talk about. Nothing? After all this time and suddenly there's nothing more to talk about. That's right. I'm sorry. What has happened? Something has happened. I've never seen you like this before. Are you worried about being found out? My husband... No, oh, no, no, no. I did meet your husband, though, the other day. You met him? He never told me. Hmm. Very interesting man. Very clever. There's no point in upsetting him. You don't want to upset him! You know I'm on your side. And so I came here myself, alone, so that no one else would see these photographs. I realize what they can do to you in the eyes of your colleagues, your children. Well, look, I wanted you to have these pictures so that you could destroy them. Picture, but not the negative. I'm trying to get those, too. You must understand there are people, powerful people, who want to hurt you. People in the government. That's because they think you don't like them. I don't know anything that could help them. Nothing? No, nothing. As you know, we have no interest in the 11th Brigade on the frontier, except in so far as to uh, neutralize its communication ability. Colonel Zeller, with the 211th and the 212th, together with the infantry from Captain Hillsman's 132nd, will be responsible for the Alpha targets. Those are the government buildings, the palace, and the key roadblocks. Colonel Min's 131st, together with Major Dominique's 213th, Armoured will be responsible for the Bravo targets. That's the telephone exchange, power plant, arsenal, telegraph, telex, radio and television. Major Aramco's job will be to seal off and hold the airport. This could be the toughest job of them all. Conceivably, you'll have to fight your way in. And fight your way out. I'm sorry? We just lost the airborne. For some reason, they've decided to bypass our friend Barrientos here. Kirov has been made commander. Sir! That's ridiculous! The airborne is mine! Bullshit! And my people tell me that you knew about this two weeks ago! Everyone else up there did! Christ, you know who Kirov is. He's Blair's man in the army. The airborne will overrun the airport in 20 minutes! One shot at the palace! 
I can still handle things, I promise you I can. Let me have a go at it. You will go nowhere. God you find that something, something has to be done about it. I'll do something. I suggest you realize, gentlemen, that something will be done about all of us unless we calm down. Is there a choice? I want to talk to you. Of course. Can we talk in private? I want out. I don't want a part of this thing anymore. Something's wrong. I can sense these things. So I'm leaving. No, you're not. Everybody in this place is sitting on their asses, talking, planning, talking. Why the delay? Look, the planning, the timing, they're, they're vital, yes. That security guy, Blair, he's on to something. I'm not imagining it. I do not intend to move this operation until I am convinced that the moment is right. Now, do you understand that? Right for who? Oh, I'm surprised at you, Colonel. You're frightened, aren't you? It's called caution. Oh, really? Mm. That's what it's called, eh? Caution. Look! If I want out, I get out! Do you understand? No, Colonel Barrientos. I'm sorry, but I don't. This is not what Rousseau said it was going to be. Maneuvers are a lot of military fireworks. All of this is waiting! And I can't do it! I can't take it! It's driving me crazy! I want to do it now! Or forget it! carriers will be ready to move out on a five-minute notice, a full tank of fuel at all times. Your men will need automatic weapons, no heavy stuff. Hot yards, Army! Plus one hour and 20 minutes, sell our first company, 212. Ministry of Internal Affairs, plus two hours and 20 minutes, my third company. Roadblock, Highway 22. Plus 16 minutes of Ramco again. Airport. 
Well, that's the question, isn't it? We don't have the airborne, remember? There's no way we're going to get Kirov. And he's going to cause us trouble. Then we go without the airborne. And while we're on the subject, <clears throat> I've decided to use Berrientos to neutralize Blair. I'd like you to arrange it, Captain. If Blair gets him, he'll kill him. You know that, don't you? No, I don't know that. I do know that it's one imminent possibility amongst many that I've got to face. But this is not a goddamn garden party, Colonel. I want to move out within two days, and your job, Captain, is to get Blair out of the way, and I want to use Berrientos as bait. Come on, soldier, open up. You hear me? Listen, I'm not gonna drink this. This stuff! It's been left here. This is what's gonna happen to your goddamn alcohol! gentlemen, and we shall find it instructive and amusing. You will be told your target designations by me when the time comes, not before. All you need to know now is what calibre of ammunition to have ready. Just keep every tank and every truck fueled up. That is all, gentlemen. Greg, dismiss the men. Sergeant Major. Company! This! Miss! And presuming. But when the men find out what is really happening, there will be no trouble. There will be no trouble, sir. You men have all been with me for a long time, so I'm going to promise you this. Whatever this exercise turns out to be, we're going to have fun. Perfect. Flair's out there. He took the bait. Everything set? Set. Right. Gentlemen, at the very most, we have five hours. Let's get on with it. First 212. Two. The condition is now Aurora. Do you read me? Aurora. The condition is now Aurora. You're coming with us, Colonel. What would Colonel Zeller's tanks be doing on the highway tonight? <laughs> Colonel Barrientos. <laughs> Condition is now Aurora. Confirm over.
on either side, and then you wait. I'm taking one squad with me. We should be back within two hours. Let's go. place. Army people aren't allowed in here. There's no telephone service today. That's right. There's no phone service today. I'm sorry. There's no I'm telephone sorry. service I'm today. I'm sorry. There is no service I'm today. I'm sorry. I'm called off. I cannot put your call through. Sir, I'm unauthorized I'm to put through any calls today. You're doing just fine, ladies. We're pinned down at the south end of the airport. We have a problem, Major. Suddenly you've got more opposition than you thought. For some reason, the airborne has been scrambled. Maybe Blair, I don't know. Anyway, it's Kurov's brigade, and you've got exactly ten minutes to seal the airport off. Now, I don't care how you do it, just seal it off. We just had word from Anwar's people that the tanks from the 23rd are about 10 kilometers from your position, over. Who's leading them? General Masu? Over. No, we arrested him first thing this morning. Who is leading them? Over. I don't know. Possibly some junior officer. Somehow you've got to turn them around without any combat. No combat. Is that clear, over?
I'm ordering you to move this roadblock. Captain, I suggest that you return to your base immediately. Now, look, we have orders. Well, let's see them. You heard me, mister. Let's see those orders. I don't have any. We got them by telephone. Since when are your orders phoned in, mister? Now, look, we, have a, we had a phone call from the assistant secretary to, to move in. And your orders don't come from some politician. We were told to take over the government buildings, and then we're supposed to secure the main square in the center of the city. You're what? You're heading into this city with no commanding officer, no orders, and you're heading for a government building? It sounds to me like you're trying to stage a coup d'etat. All right, get turned around, and we're going back. Let's go! three battalions. They should be about here by now, somewhere near this the capital. This is Flight Leader to Colonel Kirov. We are within range of Capital Airport. We are preparing to land. Out. All we know is there's been some kind of trouble in the capital. Details are very sketchy, but we may have to fight our way in. <laughs> way we can land. There's trucks and men all over the place. And everywhere else around here, they've got small hills and buildings. Give me a headset. Now look, I don't know what you jokers are playing at, but we haven't got enough fuel to get us back to base. Now if you want to be responsible for every one of these planes crashing, go ahead. There's a thousand men up here who are going to die. Permission to land denied. Do you read me? Permission to land denied. Look, we're going to crash. Do you understand that? We're running out of fuel. And the thousand men up here are going to die. Please, let us land. He's bluffing. He's got to be bluffing. Go to hell. Didn't work. Return to base. Airborne One, this is Flight Leader. We have been unable to land at Capitol Airport. Please advise. Repeat. Please advise. Need a shave. What? Could look good on television, hmm? Huh? Oh. Two four. Yeah. We think it's two four. This is Bravo one. We have secured target destination electric. Some opposition encountered, and twelve men are dead. Repeat, twelve men are dead. And proceeding to next Bravo target. Over. Remember what we said at the beginning about no killing. Yes, it seems like a very long time ago, doesn't it? Gentlemen? We have reports of a convoy moving along this road. We'll put a roadblock right here. I want a company... Now, where the hell have you been? We have reports of a coup, and I can't even find my second in command. Colonel Kirov, congratulations on your promotion. 
This is Barrientos, your colonel. Our first job is to take the palace. Every man in this outfit is now under my command. Is that clear? Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. As a member of your military forces, I am making this broadcast on radio and television in order to clarify the events that are now taking place. Since early this morning, a full curfew has been put into effect. All stores, meeting places, and public transportation facilities are closed until further notice. You hear me, over. Go ahead, Colonel. Um, everything's secure here. How are things with you? Yes, there's one or two uh, problems at the airport, that's all. Apart from that, everything's fine. As we thought, gentlemen, no opposition. Couple of comedians in fancy dress, that's all. Congratulations, Colonel. Job well done. I think you should get over here, sir. We're waiting for you. Whatever you believe I've done, I have the security of the state to think about. Yeah, of course. So you're going to need people like us. You're going to need men like me. Whoever rules this country, you're going to need us. You may think you won't, but you will. I doubt it. There aren't too many of you left. My men and I visited your headquarters this morning. Your people weren't too pleased to see us. you to know that it was me, personally. They got your men the janitor. What janitor? What? The man at the war college. I got him. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know anything about a janitor. He wasn't one of mine. And whose man was he? Good man, Hillsman. Here we go. Yes, sir, this is Major Anwar of the 2nd Armor Division calling, sir. Yes, sir, we are in control. As a matter of fact, I'm calling from the East Room of the Palace right now, sir.
It took four hours and 46 minutes. At one point, I was four minutes early. I know, I was concerned. <laughs> I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I suppose this is, as they say, where the uh, power of the country begins and ends, eh? It is. It went as Rousseau said it would. The kind of judo using their strength for our advantage. Clean, quick. Very clever man, Rousseau. It's good to have clever people on one side. Well, I suppose if I'm going to make a start, I'll to get at it, or not. That won't be necessary. Unless you intend seizing power in this country. I thought that's just what I'd done. No, you haven't. I have. Those are my tanks sitting down there. And without them, we wouldn't have stood a chance. Which is how things are now. The others shouldn't be a problem. Yes, sir. No, we just wanted to let. future here. You said you want to help your country, help its people. Well, it's only a matter of some changes. Where is Colonel Nariman? I think you should be grateful for these few mercies. You are safe. Your family is safe. It seems that families are important to you. You do love your wife, don't you? My government is pledged to the safety and security of this nation. Revolution and violence will not be tolerated. Recent terrorist activities are the work of a few warped, craven minds, and such acts have and will be punished in a manner befitting the cowardice of the crime. Only decisive action on the part of your government can assure the continuance of a real sense of order within our country. We shall all benefit from this restoration of order. Citizens need no longer fear the anarchy that results from weakness. My government will continue to deal implacably with those few traitors who oppose the will of the people. Now, there is order in the streets. Now, there is a direction to be followed. And now, there is a future for all of us to share. Finally, I 
address myself to all the families of this country of ours. This is a time of change, a time of transition. Change is no blind thing. Which way we change and what we change and why we change it will remain the prerogative of your government, but with your active support, change will inevitably and ultimately represent stability and peace within each of us, within our families, and within our nation.